Welcome Rocket Football fans. We have another exciting week of football. Crittenden County will go down to La Center, Kentucky and face the Ballard Bombers. And I know this is a game that's been circled on everybody's calendar since last year because they threw up some points on us. And uh, we've got the uh, mastermind right here with us this week. Welcome, Gage Corey. <laughs> first, time, first time on the show, and we thought, you know, we were playing Ballard this week. We're going to bring in the guy that's going to put a stop to this. Of course, we have Coach Thompson here, and uh, he's the mastermind of that awesome offense we've got. You can't make up for it now, Chris. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we have got a great show, and at the end, you're going to enjoy every second of it because we somebody may win a Golden Globe or an Emmy or whatever out of this. And I'm going to nominate Gage Courtney for one, too. But you've got to stick around for the end of the show. Let's get right to business right now. Coach Thompson, we go to Ballard Memorial, and this is a team that beat Webster last week, but they don't have quite the record uh, we do this year. They've got two wins and four losses. Yeah, they, you know, they're, their offense is still potent. They, uh, their record doesn't show it, but they're a team that can go out and put a lot of points in. You know, for as a coach, it's frustrating going in not knowing what to expect. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we can we can go out there and we can we can shut them out, or they can go out and put up a lot of points and, and keep us out of the end zone. Either way, we got to come out and play our our best game, no matter what their record is, and make sure that we don't let them dictate the game when we take it to them. They still have a pretty good quarterback in Eric Marinelli yeah, and Drew Drew. Uh, Cox is a great receiver, and he's got about 40% of their yeah. receiving yard, so he's their go-to guy. Yeah. But uh, I know Coach uh, Courtney's got something for these guys this year, don't you? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that we have have a good game plan going into this week. Um, you know, like you said, and like Coach Thompson said, they're a really good offense. You know, a lot of those guys that put up 600 and, what was it, 70-something yards, maybe it was 90-something, I don't know, but a whole lot of yards against us last year are coming back this year. You know, it's definitely not a team that we're sleeping on or thinking because they're two and four that there's something different. They're a very capable football team and can give us a lot of trouble. But I believe with our pass rush and the way we've been playing that we can give them some trouble also. We're certainly a different team on defense this year. And I, they do not have the, the big running back that the Haynes boy, I believe he graduated. Uh, and, and they will run it some. It looks like the quarterback is getting out and he's even running a little more this year than in the past. He's shown in the past that he can run. Um, even against us, I guess as a sophomore, he ran a lot against us at Black. It was at our place because we got multiple years of playing him at home. Um, but he, he he can run it, but he's more extend a play type guy, you know, mm -hmm. run around and then throw it forever. Kind of like Sindelar Caldwell right. used to do. Um, he'll extend a play and then just throw it. Receivers never stop running their routes. They continue. They, you know, scramble drill. They their shallow route, they'll work deep, you know, and they get open for them. So as long as he can keep the play alive, they have a chance. You know, Ballard Memorial's a team that uh, years ago they struggled to win a game in the season, and, and they've beaten us six in a row. Do you realize that, Coach? Yeah, we, we beat them six in a row. Um, before before that, that, that's right. And we're we, gonna, we're gonna start the streak again. That's, well, you gotta believe positive thoughts, Chris. You see, <laughs> that's negative. Right? We gotta stop that. Well, we lead this series twenty-five to fifteen. There you go. That's and, much better. And this is an opportunity to stop Ballard Street this yeah. year. We feel pretty good about it. Number seven ranked Rockets. Uh, let's take a look here at the uh, rankings this week. And we didn't move anywhere, but. There was some movement in the top, uh, top six. Paintsful and uh, Campbellsville and Hazard all did a little uh, uh, hide, the, hide the ball in the hat trick and jumped around, but we stayed right at number seven. Then Williamsburg moved in to the number 10 spot on the top 10 uh, Associated Press poll. Who knows what's going on in some of these? Yeah, definitely. We're happy to be one of the top 10 teams in the state, be recognized as that, but again, we have a goal each week and, and that's what we're trying to shoot for and then whatever happens in the polls happens. Let's take a look real quick also at this week's matchups. Uh, Callaway County will be at Fulton County and that's a game we'll have our eye on because Fulton County took Russellville to the wire last week. Had them down what 28 to nothing or 20, 22. 20, 22 to nothing. 22 to nothing. And, uh, man, it took a, took a quite an effort for Russell to we'll come back and get that one. It also shows you what kind of team Russell is. When they, when they set their mind to it. All, all in the second half. 
Fulton City will host West Carroll. That's a t West Tennessee team, and uh, they're a pretty good football team, so Fulton City's going to have a rough one this week. Russell's idle this week. Hopkins Central uh, will be idle, one of our later opponents. Trick County will be at Caldwell. That'll be one of interest for us. But then over in the second district, Class A, the ones we're really trying to keep an eye on, Campbellsville is at Bethlehem. Campbellsville, of course, 6-1 and one in the top 10 ahead of us. Bethlehem, a team we've become very familiar with over the last few years, but they're struggling a little bit. They're 1-6. It's a team that, you know, they'll be tough as well. We see those guys late. I need to correct that. They're 2-4. and four. Bethlehem's 2-4. and four. And Fort Knox, 1-5, uh, and five will be at Webster County. And the Fort Knox is another team we might see in the first round. Okay, now we're going to get to our question of the week. Name the only three Rocket football players to have two career touchdown receptions of 70 yards or longer. So it's going to have to be some of these guys, big playmakers uh, throughout the Rocket history. So three players who have two touchdowns, receptions, two touchdown receptions of 70 yards yards or longer. <clears throat> if you've got the answer, go down to H&H &H and give them the correct answer to your trivia question this week and get a round of golf from Deer Lakes. You know, Ballard Memorial, uh, Coach Thompson, is a team we have, we've played historically. Uh, on, on our top uh, seven or eight teams list, they're, they're right there. Number, they've had, uh, we've had 40 meetings with them. And they're a team we, we like we said, we've we dominated in the past. We want to get back to it this week. What's the key to winning this football game this week? Us going out and setting the tone from the beginning. Um, don't let them get going offensively. Keep them guessing what we're doing offensively, you know. Um, and just playing our game from the beginning. Um, well, there's been some times where we play teams that were, maybe weren't as good as us. And we've come out slow, and hopefully that, that's not the case this week. And I'm not saying that Ballard is not a good team. I'm just saying that the record can, can confuse people. And as kids, seven, 14, 15, 16, 17-year-old boys, 18-year-old boys, you know, you can be confused by it. You see numbers. And so we want to come out and make sure our, our, our switch is flipped on all the way on from the jump and, and we just set the tone from the get-go and make sure that we start fast, finish fast from both sides of the ball. Of course, I know we still have some injuries, and you have, mm -hmm. have some movement around up on the offensive line again this week. Mm -hmm. uh, Brock Langston will be out. Some disciplinary issues mm -hmm. will be out for at least part of the game. Yeah. And uh, uh, you've had to juggle some things around, so it looks like Kenneth may get a start. I noticed he was getting a lot of reps today. Uh, right? You'll see some different guys in there. Um, you see O'Leary play some offense this week, but um, I think Kenneth will probably get, start out the game. And it... it Putting Kenneth in there causes us have to have to shuffle more, you know, so it have to move more people, which is okay. We want to make sure that we have our best five in there. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that he provides us an opportunity to keep Sean playing defense and not having to play it both ways because Sean is one of the best defense Sean fans Larry, in Western yeah. Kentucky, so we want to keep him on that side of the ball the most we can. You want to keep him fresh, don't you? Yeah, yeah. They, you know, he <laughs> behind closed doors, he beats me, so... Uh, <laughs> We just gotta make sure that <laughs> we gotta make sure that we put ourselves in the best position to win. And I think that Kenneth this week will will give us that opportunity um, at tackle. So he's gonna he's probably gonna get a start. And to, just to address Brock the situation, he's just gonna serve just for missing some time at practice, um, service suspension to start the game. Um, but he'll, he'll he'll get his chance, his shot at some point to go in. And, 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 make, and he just needs to prove that he's going to be a teammate in this situation because we know that how Brock is. Mm -hmm. You know, when he's up and down the sideline. He's happy for everybody. He's excited about football. We want to make sure that he's still that same person when he's not out there on the field. And, and it's a, this is a good learning lesson for all our guys because Brock is one of our guys. Mm -hmm. And um, he, uh, you know, he's, he's going to serve this and, and it's just so they can see that, you know, you can't just do whatever you want to. That's what, you know. I, these guys don't realize how many eyes are upon yeah, them sometimes, and, and the bar that they have to keep, mm -hmm. they have to keep the bar high. Yep. Uh, and and it, it's important for the football program, it's important for these boys, and, mm -hmm. and it's so important for the community, and, and it's good for them to be yeah. held to high standards. Yeah, and I think if anybody is built to handle this situation, Brock is yeah. that guy. You know, this is a learning experience for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know. Hey, 
he, he's handling his business and, and hopefully he comes back to us and, and and he picks up where he left off. I'm sure they will. Yeah, definitely. Uh, speaking of high standards, we've got several guys on the record watch for this week. You know, Devin Nesbitt is still very close to that career touchdown record. He needs four more, so maybe we can get some carries this week. I know he's kind of had too many carries the last few weeks. I'm yeah. sure he's getting a little bit antsy. Yeah. Force fumbles, Gavin Dickerson uh, is pretty close to that. He's got nine. He's chasing Travis McKinney, who has ten. Uh, Sean O'Leary, man, he keeps creeping around. He's going he's gonna to hold a lot of these defensive records. He's looking for the uh, sacks record. Adam Beavers has it at 17. Right now, Sean has 13. Uh, and then we've got some other most interceptions returned for touchdowns. Uh, Brandon Lamey's right in there. He's he's uh, looking to take that sole possession of that. And most field goals in a, in a season. Parker Johnson is uh, has three, and he's two away. So we, if we get an opportunity to kick some more field goals. But... Uh, a lot of guys on offense just doing well, Coach. Yeah, and you guys do a great job. You and Andy do a great job keeping track of that stuff, and and for the guys to get their recognition when they do things, you know, for for us it's hard to keep up with all that stuff. There's, there's it's hard for me. Andy's the chasing, numbers guy. Yeah, there's so many people chasing something. It, you know, it gets away from you. But you know, we want them all. We want them all to break all those records. We want those guys to to go up and have great careers and 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 be record holders when they leave here. It's, you know, that's awesome to have that many guys on one team chasing big-time records like and that. And if you'll go onto the Rocket Football website, you can catch a lot more information about where these guys stand statewide, uh, all-time records, and, and this year's seasonal stats. So go on there. It's got tons of information. Andy does a great job keeping, mm -hmm. keeping me uh, in, in business with all the numbers, and we appreciate all that Andy Hunt does for the program. Definitely. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about some other numbers right now, Coach Courtney, the number 74 particularly. Uh, I noticed it was on a lot of documents. It was posted on the on the wall uh, or on the door in the locker room. What is that significant 74? <laughs> Explain that for me. Stefan? Yeah, it <laughs> it's not somebody's yeah. number, is it? No, it's not. <laughs> Well, 74 is obviously it's the points we gave up last year. You know, I, I, I would against hope Ballard. against Ballard yeah. County last year. This is a game, man, it, it just really has been in my mind really since last year. You know, you, you just don't want to see your guys in that position. We just could not stop them. Just, we just flat out couldn't stop them. That's a bad position to be in. And I don't think our guys have forgotten that. But we definitely want to make sure by putting that 74 on the scouting report. Coach Hodge just put it on the door going into the locker room. He's even got in on it. So, you know, I... That's who's doing it. <laughs> I think that's who's doing it. Was I not supposed to say that? I don't. Know. I didn't know he was doing it. So many things are revealed here on the coaching show each week. It may have been a secret. I'm the not last guy to know is the head coach. <laughs> no, he told me. One thing is no secret though is this defense, and and the defense has been such an integral part this year of our football team, of our five and one start, of our number seven ranking. This uh, this first team defense has only allowed one touchdown in the first half this season, and that was against Caldwell in, in the one game we lost. So what, what's, the, what's the recipe for the success this year? Having a lot of good guys that are really good and get after it. Yeah. You know, joking around and stuff, and you guys come in and say mastermind and all that. <laughs> you know, I just want to make that clear that, man, I got a lot of – we have a lot of guys out there that can flat out play and guys that play with a lot of emotion, a lot of intensity, come out and be more physical than the other team. And it's just a really fun group to coach. But it all comes down to with those guys. Those guys – another thing, we, we do a lot of things. Their intelligence is a key part of what we can and can't do each week. How smart this group is – with guys like Gavin and Lamy that are older and mature and allow us to do different things. We don't just have to line up and do one thing. They, they get us in the right spots, and it's just a fun group for me to be able to coach. Coach Thompson, talk a little bit about what this defense has meant <clears throat> to the football team. I mean, you don't, you, although we have, can score a lot of points, and we've proven that, you, you don't go in the game thinking, gosh, I, I've got to just outscore the other team. You know this this defense is going to be firm. Yeah, for, for me, uh, you know, I hope I go on the coin toss hoping we win it so we can get the ball first so and say the offense set the tone, you know, because I know the defense is going to go out there and do what they do. Um, it, it's huge for the team because we know that we don't have to be great on every drive offensively. We we know that we don't have to go out, out there and, and put up 50 points or four, upper 40s to, to win. You know, I have to feel comfortable saying that we, any game that we can get 
28 or above, we, we are going to be in it. Um, so that takes the pressure off of you offensively, and, and you don't have to press as hard. You see Hunter is more comfortable at quarterback because he's not pressing trying to look for the big play all the time. He can be smart because it's okay because the defense has our back. So just that that's allowed us to actually probably be better offensively knowing that the defense is there and can support you when, when you're not mm -hmm. at your best. I know this game is the one that Ethan uh, Dossett set the record last year and, and then it was overturned or, or somebody else actually had had it. It was a long That's story. Crazy. It was That's kind of crazy. crazy. <laughs> Nonetheless, uh, I look for Ethan to come back out to make a statement this game. Of course, he's coming off his record-setting performance last week, took over the all-time uh, receiving yards from TK. And, and I, I think Ethan's going to come into this game and really – with a vengeance. Yeah, and, and he does that every week. He wants to go out and he wants to make it he wants to make every play that you're gonna give him the opportunity to make. So any week he can erupt. But me personally, if I'm Coach Brooks, I know Coach Brooks, I'm um, Ballard's coach. Mm -hmm. I have a plan for him sure. after what he did last year. We we probably have a plan for Drew Crop. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, you gotta have a plan for him. That guy comes out and does that, has a game like that, and so, I mean six touchdowns, that's crazy. And 360 something yards. It's it's amazing the game he had. But you know, even if they do have a plan for him, it's okay because we have other guys that can go out and they make those plays just the same. And that's what's great about Ethan. He doesn't feel like he has to do that. He just wants to do whatever it takes to win. And 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 that night last year, it was his night. Well. Again, I want to go back to the defense one more time because our player segment here at the end of the show uh, is revolves around the defense. And we did a little piece early on about the trash can and how it was the uh, motivator for interceptions and turnovers. And, and now you have this other symbol of turnovers as well. It's the buckle. Uh, explain what this is, Coach Courtney. Set the stage for what we're going to, our, uh, our player segment. Uh, well, the the belt buckle, you know, you see a lot of guys or a lot of teams like Miami, they have the turnover chain, and then Alabama has the big belt buckle on the sideline, big like a WWE wrestling belt with the A on it. You know, I don't, I don't we were talking about it before, I don't know exactly how it came about, um, but I knew the turnovers when I got here were going to be something that we really wanted to, to harp on and try to find ways. I remember looking up on the internet trying to find ways to make it more fun. And I, Coach Thompson, I believe, came up with the idea of the belt buckle for us. We thought that was more fitting. You know, for us to have a country, more country, mm -hmm. big, western belt buckle. And we thought they'd get really excited about it. And, uh, you know, th those things have worked better than I ever imagined they would have. I, I believe the guys really want that belt. They really love dunking the ball in the trash can. It's amazing how, how good that that's turned out. Well, you know, I also dug back into some of the archives and found some, some footage from when you played at Kentucky State. And your nickname was AK-47, is that right? Yeah, they used to say that sometimes. <laughs> well, you've brought that, that gunman attitude in here to, uh, and we got to be careful talking about gunmen these yeah. days. <laughs> AK-47 is a bad word. But, uh, hey, what, whatever you're doing, hey, it's working, and the, the kids are enjoying the uh, competition between themselves. And that's what we're going to play off of with this little skit we've got with, with a couple of the guys, and I hope you enjoy that. Uh, this week down at Ballard kickoff at 7 p.m. It's a pretty good little road trip down there. Coach Thompson? Make sure you get there early get a seat because they don't let you on the track. And, and understand it's their homecoming, so we got to We're celebrate. track people. We Our fans like to be they in like there close. close. I, I like, like it. it. I like them being around. I, it I like, gets me amped up. I, it takes me to another place. So I know the players love it, you know. Well, as all I have to say is don't leave the track till they make you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get over and, what, and see what these guys have cooking on the players segment. We'll see everybody down at Ballard Memorial this week. Hey coach, I hear you were a pretty bad dude back in your day. <laughs> It's your game now. You chase Braxton in the buckle. Come on, coach. Let's go around. Told you. I'm retired.
It's me and you, sophomore. I'm not the bad guy. You've got something that belongs to me. My fight's not with you. I beg to differ, sir. I was just fooling about. I'm not. All right then, let's do it. Say when. Boys, let's take this fight on the road. Let the best man win. 